Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello and a very good evening from the UK. My name is Dr. Madeline Chan and I will be broadcasting the film and music show on the beautiful, phenomenal USA Global TV and Radio. So good evening USA Global TV and Radio viewers and to Facebook and to Instagram and to our LinkedIn. Before we bring on today's guest on the film and music show, I would like to share with you all some exciting news. Yes, we have, as of today, today's stats for USA Global TV and Radio YouTube channel. We have 48,422. That means in the last 28 days, we've increased 2,699. So all I'm going to say to all of you is please continue. Thank you for all of you that have reached out, that have become subscribers to the mothership, USA Global TV and Radio. But remember, we are evolving and growing. So we wish to have more people to come along and subscribe. So please do. The channel, USA Global TV and Radio, stand for hope, education, we give you the platform to help you promote your brand, branding awareness, to help you share your life story. We have 30 different programs on USA Global TV and radio, and we're always looking out for new people who want to have their own show, people that want to become a, a co-host, and people that would just love to advertise their brand. We are all in a worldwide community and the Mothership USA Global TV and Radio is growing at a phenomenal rate. But we must keep on fueling her. So as for today's guest, before I bring her, before we bring her on, I'd just like to give you a little bit of information on this, this amazing, amazing woman. She has won the International Songwriting Competition, which is held in Nashville, for World Music Winner. She's gained media attention across 11 countries. She performs at many festivals around the world, performing jazz, world music, Sufi and folk music. She's known as Ethno Jazz Electronica Music. She speaks seven languages. She writes in two languages. Well, actually, it's three because include English as well. So three languages, Urdu, Hindi and English. She composes her music for synchronization, live synchronization for films or for series. And also she has her own workshops, which she conducts in for music acad academics. I would like to say for you all, for Film and Music Show for this week, please welcome the is inspirational, super talented, Maham Suhail. Yay! Come on! Hi, Madeline. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah. And thanks to Dr. Jacqueline as well. Pleasure being here. And thank lovely. you for your lovely introduction as well. 
<laughs> you're very welcome <laughs> you ladies are powerhouses yourselves you know like so much doing so much like in your own respective capacities and it's awesome yeah to see really and yeah yeah really pleasure being in, in your company today thank you very much maham what i would yeah. like to talk about is can you actually share with our viewers from your side now what you would like to give a brief summary of your work right summarizing is always like my mom sometimes also makes a joke of it you know she's like yeah you know yeah summarizing is something which i always um well i'll try to so um basically uh, okay so first of all my name is maham suhail for those of you who are not familiar with me already and uh, i'm i'm speaking here from my actually my home studio my space in london and i moved here on a global talent visa recently and uh, i'm i'm very grateful for that as well it's supposed to be prestigious one and and yeah being acknowledged for my work and my profile within uh, music primarily but then i i grew up writing a lot of poetry working with a lot of spoken word i'm a published poet i have a book as well a poetry book a title shades of gray from back 2008 much before the you know 50 shades of gray anyways <laughs> and uh, and then uh, and yeah so that's my poetry book and then i've been singing i i i've recordings in like seven languages including a few regional languages from pakistan and also of course english urdu um persian etc um and um and then i mean i've um i mean i've been performing since a long time i've been performing with my band lineup i am also in the process of forming a band here but meanwhile i've been really thoroughly performing with the free improvisation community around here i also work as a as a as a composer as a multimedia sync composer and currently like um uh, i'm in conversation for example with so there's always conversations going on with filmmakers so we are in the pre production phases of discussing the music for his short film uh, and also i have like this uh, one song of mine from my catalog which has been uh, which licensed to a canadian web series uh, the episode of which is um, airing next month um, on 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 the national canadian tv uh, more details on that later near the time and and i produce as well i've been producing for a while i I, I, I've been working for not not just sync, but also and on, not just from own productions and for sync media, but then also sometimes producing for other artists and poets as well. Um, what else? I don't know. Please just go ahead and ask me. And yes, of course, I also was the educator uh, um, uh, intro that you gave right there, Madeline. Uh, yeah. So I've also been I conduct workshops. I've been doing a lot of community projects like that, primarily with music, but then also with like the arts in general. and uh, also a bit of songwriting lately i did one uh, where there it was an interactive soundscape that we created with revoluton arts and they're based in luton so yes um so yeah in a nutshell i'd say this is what yeah i do and <laughs> essentially <laughs> <Woo>! yeah <laughs> i want to congratulate you that's a whole lot of content and you have covered so much in your life up till now already is is in your creativity and your passion and your projects now we're going to go in a little bit of a time capsule right now okay mm -hmm. and we're just going to go back in time when you were younger right. what inspired you to follow your creative passion like for oh, some you did your writing that. yeah what inspired yeah. you right so that's the whole uh, well i mean so basically um as a child um i uh, i grew up listening to a few different forms of music and my father's music collection was quite inspirational for me at the time and i'd pick songs very quickly as a singer you know and i think i had the mind of the compo of a composer you know even back then so i'd i was really into melodies and tunes and picking them very quickly and then translating those through my voice and i was uh, i went to sacred heart so i don't know maybe not a lot of people aren't aware of this but we have a sacred heart um back in pakistan in lahore as well the city i come from and um it's a very historical institution and the same like the sacred heart in the uk you know and um and we had the school choir so i was always singing in the school choir um like mezzo soprano and because i've always had like a wide range like you know vocal range 
and then uh, also playing the melodica uh, in the school assemblies, like songs like Rasputin and soundtrack from the Sound of Music, etc. Uh, classics, you know, and and then um, uh, I would especially take after school piano lessons. Um, so with my with my first ever like formal music teacher. Man Rishane, and yeah, she's still there. She's still teaching at, at Sacred Heart, actually. So yeah, um, so I, I would play the piano, I'd sing, and I'd play the melodica. And then I was also acting in school, uh, school plays and all of that. And then just after school, I mean, that's around around the time when I was in the in the ninth year, eighth or ninth year, I started writing poetry properly. And um, I was really very much into observing social phenomena and the society around me and uh, also underprivileged. Uh, and marginalized uh, communities of people. And, you know, uh, uh, I was always observing these social phenomena as an outsider from a certain distance. That's how I'd feel uh, like, you know, I'd, I'd feel a bit of an outsider. So, um, so yes, uh, so I was writing poetry thoroughly as well and then drawing a lot also. And I'd draw a lot of like, I'd make a lot of um, uh, portraits. Uh, I'd, illustri I'd illustrate portraits of a lot of music artists and celebrities, sometimes actors as well. So the music was always there, poetry was there. And then uh, gradually also I was growing, um, developing this growing interest in drawing which later translated into art photography for me. I've actually, this is something which, again, not, not a lot of people know about, but one of my artworks has been uh, selected for the Exposure Photography Award back in 2015, and that was uh, part of this digital display at the Louvre Museum Paris as well. Um, so I've been displaying uh, some photography alongside, but that has been a little bit slower in the past years. But I'd like to come back to more like audiovisual kind of experiences with my live music as well. Uh, to share with my, you know, my audiences and fans in the future. So yes, uh, quite a multimedia sort of a, um, you know, um, an experience while growing up, I'd say, but music somehow for me, singing, and then playing the piano. And then later also, I started writing these short pieces um, on the piano. Um, I'd come up with these melodies uh, as a teenager. And then also alongside working with a lot of spoken word, beat poetry, jamming with a lot of underground musicians, writing lyrics for them. So that's how my teenage was like, also rebelling against a lot of uh, social phenomena. That was always there as well, which I think later translated into my musical recordings also in some of the songs. Uh, there is this element of, you know, empowerment, liberation, a bit of resistance in subtle ways, yeah. That is quite a lot of it. You are certainly a creative heart. You're exceptional. And the fact that you do the art as well, do you feel that you'll be, do you do your own design of your CDs? Oh, oh thank you for asking that, Madeline. Yes, <laughs> um, actually, yes, I've been doing, uh, ah, let me see. I mean, I it's not too far from where I'm sitting. So I have a few art prints of mine as well, um, which I've been um, somehow putting on my merch tables sometimes around here or, you know, when I've been, you know, during concerts, otherwise in other places. Um, yeah, so uh, for my Mitty album, actually, which entails seven tracks and the very idea how I, I came about to framing uh, the, the Mitty album is that it's a travel compilation album because um, you see, it was recorded in a few different places, um, even within Pakistan. And then since I have had a bit of a nomadic lifestyle in the past years, I was living in Spain and then the flamenco music caught, uh, you know, it took to my fancy. And then I studied their rhythmic patterns and somehow mixed those with South Asian tabla patterns as well. So yes, um, uh, so even in Dilmi Ravad, which is the which is a Persian um, title. So the lyrics are primarily Persian. So this Persian song that I recorded to flamenco instruments mixed with uh, Mediterranean and South Asian influences. So very ethno jazzy kind of a, a piece. And uh, this has the music video has some of my artwork in the backdrop as well. Actually, it's there on the green screen against the flamenco dancer in the video. And and then. Uh, yeah, also one of these performance videos of mine uh, at the Opera House, the Palau, Palau, uh, Les Artsy Sciences. I'm sorry, I'm not exactly speaking of, I'm not really doing it in the Spanish accent, but uh, yeah, so 
on there also we had like a backlit projection screen and uh that's i think one of the best audio visual kinds of concerts that i've had till date i'd say so that has my artwork as well in the backdrop going with the music and then um yes also for my cover art yes sometimes for mitty album i've used uh, one of my artworks um uh, for the for the cover title uh, for the sorry cover art of the album itself and then for certain singles as well coming of age being one for example it's a bluesy alternative uh, blues rock sort of a, a single of mine which is not part of the mitty album but a separate one and then yeah a few other songs as well yes i i've been incorporating my art uh, my you know modern art prints uh, you know into the cover art uh, designs for these singles and album um, artworks as well. Also Parisufna, my EP. So Mitti and Parisufna are my larger projects till date. And they are very folkish in their elements, in their, uh, you know, in their essence. Um, yes. So, um, yeah, definitely. And I, I love usually also, I mean, always I've loved the overlaps between different mediums and art forms. I've been kind of eclectic that way always, I believe. Yes. Uh, and love collaborating with artists across media as well. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you for that. But Maham, I want to ask about um, the international songwriting competition. I mean, I've heard, I heard about this when I used to live in Malta and there was so many people that was going for this. And I was thinking, how on earth? can you win in certain category of this because it's extremely a difficult um competition for songwriters because you're you are competing against worldwide songwriters so for you the international songwriting competition held in nashville you actually won the category of the world music winner can you tell yeah. our viewers Oh my God, How I'm sorry. I have, all that? Yeah, I have to go over. I mean, I have to sort of uh, refresh my memory what song exactly this was because I remember this was a bit. So there were a series, there was a series of wins those days. Um, you probably know about Unsigned Only as well, right? So Unsigned Only um, and and the International Songwriting Competition. You know, these both both these are big, they're supposed to be like prestigious ones, but unsigned only, of course, like maybe a step down from the uh, ISC, the International Songwriting Competition. But they're both very popular, uh, you know, uh, songwriting contests uh, from Nashville, both of them. So, um, so yeah, now I'd have to, I think this was Pona Che or Pona Six. I am guessing which was the winner for uh, the ISC's world music category because Pona 6 was also a pandemonium category winner uh, at unsigned only 2019, uh, I believe. Yes. So anyway, um, so, uh, so basically I had already been um, uh, participating in the unsigned only competitions consecutively in 2019, 2020 um and then i think isc was 2021 perhaps because this was all kind of very con you know these were consecutive years so uh, it's a it's a yeah uh, i think 2021 i you know anyone who needs to go back and check can always go to my instagram because yeah it should be there you know uh, it should be in one of the posts to check exactly what year so so because i was um part of the unsigned only um community that way you can say because and I'd, I'd I had had some wins in some of their categories you know uh so they also encouraged me to get into the ISC competition for the following year so one was this you know secondly uh Pona 6 Pona Pona 6 for my western audiences and Pona Che for my uh you know the audiences who understand what Che is so Che means six actually uh in urdu and pona means quarter two interestingly so anyway so um this song also came out in 2021 and including it also its music video so it was a fairly recent release one being that secondly you know like i just mentioned i was encouraged by the um unsigned only guys to uh, enlist myself in the upcoming ISC competition. 
uh, ISC, you know, uh, ISC's International Songwriting Competition itself. So ISC 2021. And third being, I guess, the fact that Pona Che or Pona 6 alternately, alternately uh, um, had also been getting a lot of traction and uh, it, it was featured on Rolling Stone India. Uh, it was written about by some prestigious publications, including Eastern Eye England, and uh, also got radio plugged to a few um, uh, radio um, radio stations. Um, there was a lot happening around it. I remember those days. So that itself also gave me a bit of a you know a push to uh, submit this one particularly, you know, this song. And also another interesting thing for a lot of people who probably, you know, they don't know about this, but Pona Six or Pona Che is also uh, the song that I played to Robert Kraft. Okay, I'm sorry, like no boasting here, but it's just like, I think I, I need to mention this, you know. So Robert Kraft is uh, this multi-Grammy award-winning composer and also the ex-president of Fox Entertainment. And he was visiting Berkeley Valencia during the time that I was studying there. I was doing my music production masters at the Berkeley Valencia campus. And we had this opportunity to uh, play uh, one of our songs each, just a few, like, you know, on a first come first serve sort of a basis, we could apply to get some um, feedback from Robert Kraft himself. And I, uh, you know, I, I got the slot where I could play my song in front of my entire batch to Robert Kraft. And I remember, you know, when I played the song to him, he was like, um, okay, so, so, okay. So basically I played the song, I, I, you know, fingers crossed, you know, crossing my heart. I'm like, okay, right, you know, let's see, he's a big guy, you know, let's see what he says. So uh, I remember watching his expressions, you know, whilst Pona 6 was playing. And I think this was probably, yeah, the music video was yet to be done. So just the, 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 the song itself. And uh, he seemed a bit like, you know, in awe. I mean, yeah, and and then as soon as the song finished, he's like, literally, his words were, "Oh my God, this is beautiful!" But what the hell is it? <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's beautiful, but I haven't really heard anything like this before, you know. <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry, I'm also like, just you know, I'm sorry, my phone is sort of appearing in the screen. I wanted to also make a short video snippet, you know, while I'm narrating this particular story. So yeah. So anyway, so. And Robert Kraft is like, I've never heard, I've never listened to anything like this before. Uh, because Pona Six, you know, when you go I mean, later, you know, for, for you, Madeleine, Dr. Jacqueline, who's always listening, watching, or, you know, any of the audiences, please feel free to go back, uh, go into my YouTube or, you know, my Spotify or whatever, Apple Music, and listen to it or watch the video itself. And yeah, it is that kind of an, it's a bit experimental, a bit alternative. Oh, good. Thank you. Yes, this is there amazing. <laughs> Here. Yeah, so it, it has a very eclectic sort of blend of the sitar and the dhol instrument, which is again one of my trademarks of world music, where I recontextualize uh, folk instruments. I pull them out of their um, conventional context and then I merge them with other instruments and forms of music as a composer and producer. So, so yeah. So yeah, because of all of these reasons, I think I really was encouraged to go for the ISC competition and to submit Pona 6 or Pona Che to that one, particularly 2021. That's phenomenal. Maham, I need to just, what would be interesting is the way that what we've been talking about, I find it intriguing how you mix, you fuse ancient music, like Sufi, yeah. and blend it with Latin or flamenco. You bring, you bring an edge to it through... Is it? Am I right in saying this electronic music? Yeah. I'm, I'm, what can you explain? What this? I mean, this is fascinating. This is absolutely uh, is astounding. How did you manage to do this? This is superb. Uh, so yeah, that's the thing, Madeline. Imagine, uh, imagine what what all goes on in my head. It's like a crazy place, right? So, I mean. Um, yeah. Yeah, people who know me and who know me closely enough, they know, yeah, it's a yeah, a bit of a, yeah. So, well, I mean, and also, honestly, like back in Pakistan, uh, you know, because I was training with uh, with a few ustads or gurus 
And um, then also I, I was a scholar at the ITC, Sangeet Research Academy. Sangeet means music um, in Hindi, essentially. And um, I was studying with, you know, it's, again, I'm, I'm fortunate. I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm no one. I mean, it's all really, I'm, honestly, it's a, it's a blessing. And I, I've been working hard and I've been supported by a lot, I would say, after a certain point when my parents were convinced that, yeah, you know, she really has it and she's at it. Uh, so yeah, anyone and everyone, uh, starting from my parents, who's been supporting me along this journey, um, I'm very grateful. So I mean, again, IITC SRA was a prestigious institute. It had some of the top gurus at the time. Some of them, these guys aren't even alive anymore, and may their souls rest in peace. And I studied with some of the gurus there. I was also very much involved in the theater scenes there. So one, I think, owing to the very multi-media. Uh, and multicultural as well influences that I've had while growing up, coming from a family where we were traveling a lot. So I, I never, I felt I always had a very global sort of an outlook, um, both to my, uh, you know, uh, my personal and my professional lives, my creative lives. Um, both aren't really departed from each other in any case, though. So I was always into, I was intrigued by different cultures. And especially, yes, when my training, my Raga training started, which I'd never really honestly considered before. Uh, I grew up to a lot of Patti Smith. Um, also, some friends would call me Janice, you know, the 60s, 70s, baby boomer sort of influences. I grew up to a lot of beat poets, Western music, and uh, also film music, yes, from the subcontinent. But, um, but yeah, and then started delving a bit into jazz and, you know, uh, Again, even the pop divas who I'd be influenced by while growing up in terms of the music I was listening to, whether it was Whitney Houston or uh, even, um, you know, uh, like the big voices, basically, you know. So, yeah, I remember. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, there's always uh, this sort of these elements of these jazz pop kind of elements, I would say in my influences then when i got into the raga music my interest and my fancy for uh, sufism not just the sufi music but sufi poetry and incorporating that into my music but also sufism in general as a way of life as a philosophy it started developing also i was going through my healing process around that time so i was doing yoga i was doing sufi zikr and uh, you know combining a few techniques and also putting the breathing techniques to use in my music and my singing so um so yeah, so when the raga music came in, also thanks to certain classical artists from my family who pushed me in that direction, and thanks to the lack of certain educational resources back in Pakistan, I'm sorry, we don't have a lot of formal programs uh, other than for certain conventional forms of music, and uh, we don't even have proper formal programs for music production, for example, which is why I, with a with a pinch of salt and a lot of you know a lot of fear in my heart, I applied to the Berkeley program, but I, I'm grateful I got into it on a scholarship. So thing is, uh, and then Berkeley came in, and then I started using Ableton more. Um, um, more so and and you know and and i was already using logic pro i was already putting some of these ideas acoustic ideas to practice including with Pona six you know where there's a, a jazz guitarist there's, there's a dhol player but he's not playing the dhol the way it's conventionally played this punjabi folk instrument and then there's a sitarist and but then there's also like the bassist and the guitarist are very jazz influenced and also my the melody the top line that i wrote and the lyrics for the song also have this, you know, like they are basically composed in the Western uh, 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 chordal kind of, you know, in the Western uh, musical mu modes of music, right? So this was all happening simultaneously. And coming from that background where I was already, I grew up to these, you know, certain rock and roll alternative, pop jazz kind of influences. And then also sound um, field recordings, um, sound art came in at a certain point when I was studying art, actually. And I was recording a lot of field sounds. Um, so eventually, the, um, the integration that happened um, is very ambient, sometimes very jazzy, has these world folkish um, influences that you can hear very, you know, very, very like properly so. And yeah, and, and uh, sometimes it's folk poetry and at other times my original poetry. So yeah, so eventually it became like this jazz fusion electronica kind of a mix. 
that that came out and Mitty album has some of that happening definitely um a few, a few singles have that uh coming of age then sada sada yes the latest release that i've had has this trip hoppy kind of an uh, a vibe you know uh, and with urdu lyrics and uh you can tell by the way the vocals are performed. You're a vocalist, and you're a singer songwriter yourself, Madly. Yeah. So th there are some, you know, jazz worldy influences in an ambient sort of a context, even in Sada, the latest release. So yeah, so, I mean, I don't have one specific answer, sorry, to your question. It always <laughs> I yeah, I always end up telling stories and you know, deductively talking about, you know, my processes. <laughs> But it's not just one thing. It's it's been uh, yeah, it's been a few things going on simultaneously at certain points in my life, which then I would try to put together in more structured format, you know. So, and they always haven't been very structured, but and that's fine because you know, with the free improvisation community in London, for example, it's it's been very free flowing. Sometimes atonal music also that we've played avant garde and poetic and all that. So there's that practice that I've had, and then there's the more structured practice that I've had with the band lineup and uh, with the lately the solo set that I'm developing, and uh, you know you'd get to see some of that being performed live as well uh, in venues in London and around, inshallah, soon. Yes, yeah. That, that's amazing. I, I, you have so much that you want to share with everyone. It's almost like we have to have part two because. I've never met um, a musician, songwriter, and an art. I mean, I don't know, David Bowie, I guess. David Bowie did his music and his visual art as well, didn't he? So you kind of remind me in that respect, in that way. But what I'd like to ask... Thank you. Um, <laughs> you're very welcome. Um, I, what I'd like to ask is if anyone wanted to start the journey that you've begun in doing the style of music, could you give some advice to anyone that is wants to pursue a journey in music in what in, in um, the style that you do? That you oh do. God! Okay, right. <laughs> I mean, I would. I, okay, right. I mean, that being the well, this this part of the question being a very um, yeah, being a bit dodgy. I mean, just uh, short, just short, short. <laughs> just short. A couple of sentences. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, okay. So, <laughs> I'd say uh, that they'd have to be prepared. Actually, when you speak of this, interestingly, the educator and mentor part of me, you know, gets a bit activated mentally. You know, uh, thinking uh, when whilst thinking of a response to this question. Because, uh, like, I've even developed like a music therapy course once, and you know, I have been an IB school teacher, so a very innovative sort of an approach to music teaching, also that way. Um, I think uh, for somebody who wants to go down this rabbit hole um, uh, that uh, I've been down and I'm still sort of navigating, you know, um, so it's a bit of a back and forth sort of a journey as well, sometimes, you know. Um, yeah so and and uh, because there's a there's there's certain experimental elements also in this process of mine so, so at times also i have to be wary of the self doubt that seeps in and um, then of course uh, meditation and these practices do help to kind of help align myself you know and you yourself know madeline you know you 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 know founder of the star child and you know yeah star child universe and you know so, you know, there's a significance of meditation, even now, like even the stone that I'm wearing. I think we need to, first of all, uh, be prepared for a lot of challenges that come along this way, because it's, um, in any case, for any creator to begin with, uh, like this friend of mine, dear friend of mine once said, he's a songwriter, singer himself. And I think I saw him probably, he was on here as well, watching Rafe. So he once uh, said to me uh, in a very assuring, so in a, in a consolation sort of a tone, um, uh, that, hey, listen, it's fine. You know, we are artists and we need faith more than anyone else in the world because we are creating something, you know, and, you know, we, we are creating something. And especially for musicians, you're creating something completely out of thin air. 
So um, if we don't have faith in the journey, then who, I mean, how can we kind of convince others to, to you know, um, uh, follow suit with that? So mindset, first of all, the mindset is, you know, just like with so many other practices, it's very necessary. Second, in terms of training and, um, uh, you know, gaining those skill sets. So be prepared to sometimes have certain sessions or for a certain uh, period of time, for a certain, you know, block of like, you know, maybe a few months at least. <clears throat> uh, you need to sit with a tanpura. I still use a tanpura till date uh, to practice my vocals um, because, you know, it's a drony kind of sound and and um just two notes actually you know the the root note and the fifth so uh in the western you know sensibility so the sa and the pa notes so um i believe it's very effective so um uh, it helps you practice your baritone and move towards you know your your central like your root note and then move upwards so the lower you go the higher you you know the lower <clears throat> you practice the higher you can the higher pitch you can hit as well then later so the right kind of practices the right kinds of techniques i believe in terms of training would be very important to begin with for somebody who's just starting off and wants to pursue um a cross genre sort of an approach like you just mentioned you know like something that i've been doing so uh, so having that kind of vocal training or i mean if they want to sing for example even if they want to be a songwriter or play an instrument so being familiar getting themselves familiarized with both the the eastern and the western uh systems of music in uh, theoretically speaking without i don't mean to sound daunting or anything but at least to a certain degree i'm not saying you need to ace the abrsm 8 grade 8 you know and all of that you don't even need to do all of that but having a basic sensibility Second, second is to listen to uh, the artist, to have your inspirations and your aspirations very clear and to listen to their music as much as possible. Third, uh, of course, like, you know, sorry, fourth. So mindset, uh, having uh, incorporating the right kinds of training systems um, and following those, having a regime for that, a discipline for, for, for you know, those different, uh, those uh, the techniques that you want to train in, primarily, um, you know, certain... Uh, maybe a bit of raga based training and then uh, you know it's and then getting into the western systems of you know a uh, bit of basic theory third i would say um listening yes alongside listening uh, uh and gaining a better clarity of you know who your similar artists in terms of your aesthetic even if it's de developing only or or evolving that and then fourth of course uh, to surround yourself as much as possible with the people uh, who you feel from the heart are or could be your tribe, you know. So these this could include musicians, poets, lyricists, even visual artists, you know, because all of this inspires us to write songs, to make music. Um, and for me, honestly, as an additional element, I really love going into nature and just to sit in silence and to just listen to the sounds of nature, even if it's the, you know a flowing stream or a river or you know, the winds you know sounds of the winds in different landscapes so i feel that too yeah uh, absolutely <laughs> i totally agree with you in every way nature but muhammad there are fabulous insights fabulous tools the four vital keys thank you for sharing that so before we close out maham can you share with our viewers where they can contact you and how you can help them right again thank you madeline by the way i'm i'm really I, I think your questions are quite on point thank you you're actually helping steer me in those directions you know to to talk about things that i've been wanting to share with with the world so thank you and you know of course you know it shows you know that what a great author host presenter even artists, you being a, you know, like songwriter, singer yourself, you know, you understand all of this. So great. Okay. So, um, very welcome. So, um, okay. So my email ID, I think, first of all, I think, I mean, of course, please feel free, like, you know, all artists, well, I would say, uh, you know, how the, the social media is, of course, very, a very legitimate way of, um, uh, whether it's discovering someone or getting to know them better 
or to see you know what's the latest that they're but also i have a mailing list uh and uh i check my emails very regularly one of the first things i do when i wake up every morning so um, email is one so there is uh, um, uh, my my go-to email id is connect like you know the word connect c-o-n-n-e-c-t connect at the rate of maham m-a-h-a-m hyphen suhail s-u-h-a-i-l dot com so connect at maham dash or hyphen suhail dot com and which also uh, kind of uh, takes you in a sort of points you in the direction of my website which is which is itself maham hyphen suhail dot com um and then um you know like on my website on the on the home page the top right corner if you want to share the screen as well over here um if it's possible please so you know we have a visual reference as well i think you just you opened it just a little while ago as well so this is my spotify you can see my spotify as well i mean the numbers keep dwindling but yeah that's i mean that's that's how social media works it's fine so um but then uh this is my spotify then on, in any case on my website you can find on the top right corner all my social media links including instagram uh facebook um everything you see right here actually in the right in the center uh, on the top of my home page and my youtube and everything and then of course you have my email id and then what anybody could approach me for like you know i i i love like just today actually and one of my i'm so happy one of my really good and old students also uh, wrote a comment on here during our live stream uh ali shakir his name is and he wrote me on whatsapp also today and he wants to take a um, revive lessons and i'm so happy to you know uh, hear that so yeah so basically i do vocal coaching you can approach me for that also productions you know i work across 3 daw so i can always write songs i can produce for you and for collaborations of course for singing performance live performances yes so that position that's fabulous honestly yeah. thank you so much we're actually going over time now so we need oh, to close okay. out so i just want to say thank you maham sahel and i'll see you de definitely back we'll see you for part two so please All do right, come back you. please we'll do come back. back yeah well, thank you so there much you have okay there, there you have it viewers a very great film and music show episode for this week please do look up maham sahel as for me dr madeline chan please do contact me if you want to go on to as a guest for film and music show please go on usaglobaltv.com slash book your session and go on to the film and music with show tile and book yourself onto the show all creative hearts we're welcome i just want to say thank you to our sponsors audi k barrier in association with songs for you thank you to our amazing producer dr jacqueline and thank you usa global tv and radio viewers and i'll see you next week thank you so much good night Bye. We face daily cyber risks, spending over seven hours of screen time, including 4.5 hours on mobile phones. This convenience comes with significant dangers, with cybercrime costs predicted to exceed $10.5 trillion by 2025. In 2023 alone, seniors lost over $3.4 billion to cybercrime. Our goal is to make social engineering concepts of cybersecurity easier to understand. We work with business teams, senior living facilities, investment companies, and educational institutions, both individually and in groups. We offer real-life examples to help you recognize and prevent attacks, with sessions available both in person, in selected regions, and remotely. Schedule your training session, or to learn more, contact us today. Call us at 847-845-9360. Email us at info at cybersecurityeasy.com. Protect your team and family with cybersecurityeasy.com.
My name is Dr. Felix Kravitz, and I am the founder of CybersecurityEasy.com, LLC. We live in a world full of vulnerabilities and cyber risks. We spend almost four and a half hours a day on our mobile phones. It's over seven hours of screen time daily when including computer use. We often forget that this convenience comes with risks. Published data predicts that the cost of cybercrime will exceed $10.5 trillion in 2025. These numbers encompass not only businesses, but also each one of us, including our children and our parents. In 2023, the FBI reported over $3.4 billion lost by seniors aged 60 and older. CybersecurityEasy.com LLC's initiative is to massively support the community by providing cyber safety coaching and improving social engineering awareness. Our goal is to make social engineering concepts of cybersecurity easier to understand. We work with business teams, seniors, and educational institutions, both individually and in groups. We cover various topics from phone phishing attacks to AI generated voice cloning, robocalls, password protection, and more using life examples. Talk to us today. Call us at 847-845-9360 or email us at infozucybersecurityeasy.com. Meet Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, President, Founder, and Chief Listening Officer of USA Global TV and Radio. She is a certified life, career, and executive coach. Dr. Jacqueline is the Amazon number one best-selling author of Behind the Green Screen and Adversity to Awesome. As the listening mentor, she teaches children and their families how to listen at an elevated level through the book series titled The Amazing Adventures of Lady Ella, The Listening Mentor. The Creative Hearts Awakening book series features heart-centric creatives who share their awakening journey. Through the Power of Listening educational course platform, people can get certified as elevated listeners on USA Global TV and radio. Learn how to center yourself and align with nature through the power of nature, plants, and shrines. The Journey of Chakra Psychology course will educate you on the chakras and their meaning. The Intuition of the Heart course will help you understand how to trust your intuition, learn how to face the shadows of self, and understand the impact of following trends and materialism. Set boundaries and ask for permission to help establish better relationships, deeper connections, and more authentic conversations. Take your communication expertise to a higher level with the course for curious humans. After all, we are not robots. Looking to start your own podcast platform? Get everything you need in the Podcaster Pro Package with Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. How can music, breath, and your voice set you free? Find out with the Power of Listening courses. Dr. Jacqueline is a certified meditation teacher, yoga instructor, and Juice Plus distributor. She will help you create a plan for your healthy lifestyle. As an expert in the art of interviewing with over 3,000 hosted and or produced live broadcasts, Dr. Kerbeck helps her clients stand out as global broadcasters. Dr. Kerbeck's books are available on Amazon. Start your listening journey by reading. Tune into the Listening Mentor TV show, Fridays on USA Global TV, and learn how listening can be your superpower. Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, MBA, DBA, Certified Holistic Life, Career, and Executive Coach. Certified Yoga Sculpt Teacher. Certified Meditation Teacher. The Listening Mentor. Singer, Songwriter, Founder, President, Chief Listening Officer of USA Global TV and Radio. DrJacqueline.com Thank you to all our elevated listeners, team members, animal characters, and co-authors. Contact us at 215-852-9406. Jacqueline at drjacqueline.com.